auditorium this afternoon. That's the reason we have practically no preliminary. There are many things that I could say. I shall not say. The very fact that I'm here, you know that I'm happy to be here. I'm here because I want to be here. I'd rather be where I am in this very hour than any other place in the whole world you know. I'm in the perfect will of God, standing where I am in this very hour. Dear Jesus, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. It costs much, but it's worth the cost. It costs everything. If you really want to know the price, Really want to know the price, I'll tell you. It'll cost you everything. Catherine Kuhlman died a long time ago. I know the day, I know the hour, I can go to the spot where Catherine Kuhlman died. But you see, for me, it was easy because I had nothing. I had nothing. Which leg, honey? Which leg? Stump down on it. I couldn't do that. You couldn't? No. Run over there. Go on. Go, go on. Run over there. Run. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. For how long, honey? For how long? Oh, three years. This is, are you from Germany? Yes. Did you expect this to happen when you came from Germany? Huh? You, did, you didn't know what to be. Do I talk too fast for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't understand her and she can't understand me very well, but the Holy Spirit speaks a universal language. That's what's so wonderful. I know better than anyone else from whence I've come. From a little crossroads town in Missouri with a population of 1,200 people. I had nothing. I was born without talent. Most people are born with something. I didn't even have hair on my head when I was born, just red fuzz. One day, I just looked up and said, Wonderful Jesus, I have nothing. I have nothing to give you but my love. That's all that I can give you. And I love you with all my heart. And I give you my body as a living sacrifice. If you can take nothing and use it, then here's nothing. Take it. It isn't silver vessels that he's asking for. It isn't golden vessels that he needs. He just needs you.
What is over here, Jimmy? Tell him. This man is from Turkey. He had an operation on this knee, which they removed the kneecap, and he was scheduled for another operation, and the Lord had marvelously healed his knee. Five years ago, he had this problem. And, and the kneecap had been the removed? The kneecap was removed. And he was scheduled for another operation. Bend it now, bend it. Is there no pain at all? No pain. And the kneecap has been removed. The man is from Turkey. One kneecap has been removed, and he's scheduled for another operation. The Lord had just healed him. When he put a new kneecap in there, I'm not sure. But bend it back. Is that, is that the, the, the knee where the kneecap has been removed? Kneel down on it. Kneel down on it right now. Give him a great shake. Get up, sir. Come on. Get up. Get up without any help whatsoever. Turn around and run over there. Go on. Turn around and run. Go on. Go on. Go on. Come on over here. Is there no pain there at all? Is there no discomfort there whatsoever? No discomfort. Bend them all the way back. It's what? His daughter and his wife. Did you believe this was going to happen to your daddy? No. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you didn't believe this, this could happen to your daddy? How old are you? Fourteen years old. And, and the family is from Turkey, right? Did you think something might happen to your daddy? Yeah. Are you happy? Yeah. Turn around and tell the people how happy you are. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. You, you just can't talk. Dear Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost just goes through her body. Let her go. The power of God goes through her body. The glory that's on this man. This man is getting something more, I'll tell you. He's getting something. Keep seated. That is the power of the Holy Ghost. I want to explain something to you very, very quickly before I enter into a little heart-to-heart -heart talk. I want you to know that I have seen literally thousands and thousands slain by the power of the Holy Spirit. And to this very hour, I do not understand the slain power of the Holy Ghost. One thing I do know, and that is that Catherine Pullman has nothing to do with the slain power of the Holy Spirit. Please believe me. There will be those who will plead and say, Oh, touch me, touch me. It is not my touch, it is his touch. Know that. That's one thing I can promise you. There's one thing that I know about the flame power of the Holy Spirit. It is not in my touch. It is not Catherine Kuhlman. It's the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. And the very thing that will happen in this great auditorium, in this building today, happened to Paul not very far from this building. I give you praise to the power of the Holy Ghost to go through this body one day. Just a very sharp distance from this building one day. That's what happened to Paul on the road out here. That's exactly what happened to Paul on the road out here. Paul on the road to Damascus. Think of it, this is so wonderful. We give you honor, we give you praise, we give you glory. I know the power of the Holy Ghost is on this. Is there no pain there? Move it up and down. Move it up and down. And as Paul was going on the road to Damascus, Something happened, something glorious happened. Suddenly he was slain by the power of the Holy Ghost and he found himself prostrate on the ground. Some of you may have walked on the very same spot where the Holy Spirit did say, Paul. And I believe in that a moment if any one of us would have come to him and would have said, What happened? Suddenly you found yourself prostrate on the ground. What happened? Be thankful. 
You would have gotten up and looked at us and would have said it was wonderful. I don't understand what happened. I don't know what happened. But it was a glorious experience. Put, your, put, put, put it up now. Swing that arm now just as hard as you can. Give her a great big God bless her. In the car wreck, I had a broken back and a broken neck and a broken leg. This, how, long, how long ago was this that? This was in 1968. And what has happened since? And since then, um, I've had extreme pain in my right arm and in my shoulder. And though my neck and my back and my leg got all right, this, all the ligaments were pulled loose from the back of my spine down into my arm. And I lost all the power in this arm to where I have only five-pound pressures all the time. And was in pain. If you see the dark circles under my eyes from not being able to sleep from pain. That's whole time power. This is an hour of restoration. This is not a day of revival. He's restoring the fruits of the gifts again. The fruits of... Honey, you'll never be able to stand on your feet. But uh, when she pointed up in the balcony for me, <laughs> Jesus healed me in a moment. And, um, and now what? No pain. I'm completely healed. I'm, I'm that was two days ago. Two days ago, yes. Yeah. still with no pain. No pain. Whatsoever. No pain. Praise the Lord. Somebody's ear was just open. I don't know wh where you are. I don't know where you are in the great auditorium. Hold your ear tightly closed. Hold your good ear tightly closed and somebody can hear everything that I say. An ear has just been opened. And the person hears me perfectly wherever you are. Come on up and, 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 and tell me where you are. What is this over here? Just out of out of breath. Tell, doctor. Go, go on. Tell this. This gentleman tells me that he's had a heart condition for over five years. And that before this, he couldn't walk up and down stairs. He's just been out in the back running up and down. And he's not <laughs> getting short of breath. Are you obeyed? Tell the people. Where are you from? And, and for five years, you've had this heart condition. Yes, I couldn't run up and down the stairs. Uh, I couldn't walk up the stairs without getting out of breath. And when Catherine mentioned that there was a healing in the balcony of a heart condition, I felt strangely warmed. And I tried running up the stairs, and I didn't get out of breath. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Where do you go to church? Methodist church. Another Methodist. Oh, the puck. Keep running, my brother. Keep running. It'll be all right. That's a beautiful heart condition. What is this over here? Here is a minister from Australia. People, the Holy Spirit is moving so fast. The Holy Spirit is moving so fast in this place. I give you praise. The Praise Holy the Lord. Spirit. Hallelujah. When Hallelujah. they get this emotional from Australia, you know it's the Holy Ghost. Yes. I give you a praise. Oh. Hallelujah. That glory. Come here, come here. You tell what happened to your... Which ear open? The left ear. Many know me and they know that I can't when they sit beside me on the left side, I couldn't hear them. But now I can. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hold this ear tightly closed. Do you hear me now? Yes. Do you hear me now? Yes. Do you hear me now? Yes. Do you still hear me? Yes. How great is our water. Then sings my soul. Lift. But then the
the most exciting things I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen anything like this before, and it's, it's uh, something that's been predicted and it happened in the first century, and the same thing's happening today. So it's really amazing. What's happened to me in the conference? Well, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You're really enjoying kingdom living now. Yes. I go. I to be saved and to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and then to come back to Jerusalem and meet Jesus here, I think it's just something, just a rarity. I think it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I think it's unique. I just praise God for it. I have been always searching for the leading of the Holy Spirit of God, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, that whole impact just to give us more strength. What is the impact on you personally? Uh, well, of course, I was uh, baptized in the Spirit already, and uh, this is a... Uh, just a kind of gathering of fellowship together, sharing the blessing of the Lord with uh, fellow Christians, fellow pilgrims. <laughs> oh, everything was great. We just enjoyed ourselves and we're built up in the Lord and the people are great, the city is great and praise the Lord. It's been most beautiful and I have grown in, in the Spirit since I've been here, although I've been baptized before in the Holy Spirit, but I've grown tremendously in the Holy Spirit since I've been here. And I wish that everybody in the whole world could come. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. For in the last days, said God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my servants and handmaidens will I pour out of my Spirit. The first World Conference on the Holy Spirit took place in March 1974. The second World Conference on the Holy Spirit is scheduled for November 1975 in Jerusalem, Israel.